Good morning, friend, and welcome to Namaste Today, a terrific way to kickstart the day. I'm your heartfelt host and the sensei to serious joy, Christopher Witecki. This audio broadcast is for Tuesday, July 11, 2017. It's great to be back. Welcome, friend. Namaste. Well, I've been on hiatus for a week, and I have to say we've been experiencing the high tides of cancer, which is our emotions. And last weekend, we had a full moon that definitely affected me. We'd love to hear your comments on how it hit you. Today in our Zodiac weather, I'm going to talk about where the planets are today and how we're blessed with a temporary yod. But first, I'm switching things up. I thought we'd steep ourselves some tea and have an early tea time. Hello, my friend, and welcome to our tea time. Today's tea time topic is, oh, hell no. And this is actually a story that kind of comes up. Uh, A viewer and also a Serious Joy subscriber was sharing a story about a week ago. And in this story, I don't think I'm giving away anything too private, in her morning meditation or in her morning uh, spiritual exercises, she suddenly had a vision of her husband getting hit by a car. And her first response to seeing that vision was, oh, hell no. (laughs) She'd been doing a lot of work on herself, a lot of work in her relationship. She said there was no way she was going to let that happen in her life. That was her immediate response. And when I read that, I really smiled. I smiled because we're in cancer right now. Cancer is our emotions. And when it comes to emotions, we tend to feel like we're going to be stuck in these emotions forever. We also tend to get very emotional when we see or have an image like that, when a thought comes to us or a story uh, we hear from someone uh, close to us where they go through a hardship, we start to worry that sort of thing could happen to us. When these kind of uh, tragedy ideas come into our head, we quite often are filled with fear, we're filled with emotion, and the question is, how are you going to respond in that moment? And I think her response is brilliant. Oh, hell no. (laughs) Okay. Now, the interesting part of the story is later when her husband came home, uh, he told her that he had nearly been hit by a car that day. So she had seen him getting hit and she responded, oh, hell no. And in the end, he had not gotten hit. And that made me to think that I do feel we have a part in manifestation. When we receive a telepathic message like that and we put out a response of, oh, hell no, I really believe that we put out a wave that somehow protects that person, maybe stalls that person for one second. Maybe he thought of his wife for just one millisecond coming out of the store and that was all it took, that one millisecond of thinking about his wife, probably her emotion going, oh, hell no, (laughs) across the universe. And I feel that there's two interesting lessons here in this little story. One lesson is uh, the one I just told you, that the way we respond could have an effect, I think, when we have visions or thoughts of something going wrong with a loved one. If we have some sort of a vision or a dream or whatever, our response is very important because I think it casts some sort of a spiritual vote. It's literally a prayer. The other part of this story and the other part of this lesson has to do with how we respond to ourself emotionally. The truth is, your power is in the response. That's both both in the inner world and in the outer world. We quite often think that our power is the first step we take, or our power is us finishing to the finish line and pushing really hard. But I've just noticed as a sensei, observing human consciousness out there, that the real power to change your life is not controlling what comes in the door but rather controlling how you respond to what comes in the door. In this particular story's case, the response was brilliant because it was very clear and definite, oh, hell no, that's not happening to me, right? And I think that's kind of a fight-or-flight response, uh, but I think it's the most powerful and good one, honestly, to a situation where a tragedy might be walking in the door. But in smaller waves of emotion, which is what we often feel are lots of tremors, we don't often have such a, um, just such a moment of drama for us to learn. We actually learn in the small little dramas of each moment. And in those little dramas of each moment, as we move forward here in the last 10 days of cancer, I really recommend that you be conscientious 
not so much of how you're feeling. Of course, how you're feeling is very important, and it's dominating us with the sun and cancer. We're being forced to get in our feelings. But pay more attention to how you respond to those feelings. And if you want to be gentle about it, well, then the word is self-compassion. Whatever your feelings are feeling, your response to those feelings should be compassionate, calm, non-judgmental. Let's say mother-like. That's somewhat what cancer is. But I also think to ascend kind of out of our trauma, there needs to be a dash of spirituality there too, which to me means let's not just be compassionate, but let's treat ourselves a little bit more holy. By holy, I mean gentle. By holy, I mean with absolutely no judgment. By holy, I mean almost as you would imagine the angels hold you, all right? The way we feel and hope to be held by heaven. So, In the next 10 days, we're basically crafting an emotional tone. And really, we're unaware of it, but a lot of our emotional disposition and the things that we're feeling is due to the things that's happened to ourselves. but it's mostly continued and probably made worse by our own emotional response to ourself and our own emotional response to an outside situation as well. If you have some sort of outside situation come to you, also think about how are you going to emotionally respond to this? What emotions are you going to put forward? How are you going to respond to yourself? What's the emotional outcome that you're looking for? It's my belief that if you do this conscious work to emotionally be aware of your inner response and your outer responses, you will build a foundation from which love and joy can grow. Now, the planets are looking for love and joy to grow, so this is a good time to exit and move to our Zodiac weather. This Zodiac weather is for Tuesday, July 11, 2017. And my global prediction for Planet Gaia is sunny and rather productive today. Step 19, Cancer, is the ruling step. And the moon in Aquarius allows us to detach and get the job done. Let's take a look at the planets. Well, we're in the high tides of cancer, and I just want to take one little moment to say, boy, the first 19 days of this cancer transit for me was rough. I don't want you to feel alone out there if you felt like a baby. I have had to nurture myself and basically make it through the day (laughs) each day, and there's no outside reason. I know, my wisdom knows that We are clearing a lot of emotional junk in our trunk, a lot of emotional baggage. And I reflected uh, over the full moon last weekend and reflected on really how difficult the last six months had been and how I had really tried my best to be there for myself emotionally, but was basically trying to be there for myself in so many other dimensions. I just simply couldn't. So up until this point, my friend, yes, I think it's been high tides. I think we've been dealing with a lot of inner emotion. And there's only one way to go about that, to self-nurture without judgment and keep on swimming. Just keep swimming. So that said, today I believe we begin to swim into new water. Step 19, Cancer rules the day. 19 nets to a 10, which is I manifest. So this is a day where you're likely going to see yourself uh, get some distance, make some progress, actually solidify some things. In the high seas of cancer, let's say today's the day you find an inner tube. So you start to feel like, oh gosh, perhaps I'm not going to drown. And the universe is actually giving us a temporary yod today, which points into this step 19 sun. So this manifestation that we're making, this is a big deal. This is some sort of a life raft, an emotional life raft that we're going to keep for a while. So it's worth to keep swimming today. Now, the two legs of this yod are by one side, the moon. The moon is in the second deacon or act two of Aquarius. With the moon in Aquarius, this is a bit of an emotional break, an emotional break because a moon in Aquarius has the ability to detach from emotion, which is a gift that Aquarius is probably <laughs> don't always appreciate that they have, but it's a great gift to be able to do that. So today we emotionally detach a bit, and being able to emotionally detach allows us to see a bigger picture, maybe to see the destination, maybe to see how far we have come. 
we got kind of numb by the universe long enough in order to see some of the emotional trauma we've been in. And on the other leg, which is quite fascinating of the odd, is Saturn retrograde at step 22, Sagittarius. Now, with Saturn back at step 22, Sagittarius, this means that we're going to have some sort of quantum realization here as it stays at step 22. It will retrograde back to 21, by the way. That'll be the stationary degree. But there's going to be some sort of realization, some sort of realization about our feelings, too, and how our feelings meet our feelings, too. And this will make us feel that we belong for net four on another level, another belief. So in essence, it looks like today, by detaching and getting a little perspective of your life, you will likely come to a new belief about what life is, not just feel better. And this is, I believe, us finally starting to steer that inner emotional boat towards a new destination. Up until step 19, like I said, it's been high seas, we've been lost at sea. You know, people are diving a scurvy, you know, like it has not been a fun journey. But as of today, something steers the ship into the right direction. Now, there's some help also from the planets, a lot of help, actually. One is Mars. The sun is now conjuncting Mars, which means our heart and our ego are starting to team up. And they're going to continue to conjoin and they're going to be kind of connected for quite a long time. So, we have been feeling, let's say, a little apart from our strength. We couldn't find our courage. Like Mars has not been close to our heart. But now that our ego is close to our heart, it means a couple of things. One, it means if your heart's upset about something, watch out. You're going to be volatile. There's going to be inner temper tantrums from the inner prince or the inner princess. So with the sun this close to Mars, expect temper tantrums. But the other is... If you find yourself falling off the swing set, this is one of those times with the Sun conjunct Mars that you just get up, you brush off your knees, and you get back on that swing. So you have this immediate strength to respond to your emotional needs, and this is going to be get, getting stronger, stronger, and stronger as the days progress. Another little gift from the universe is Mercury, our mind, is way up at step 9 Leo. Now, first of all, that's at step 9. It means our mind is ready to act. Remember? the sun is at step 19, which means our heart is ready to act. So this is what I call soul harmonic. We're ready to act. But Mercury is in Leo. We are ready in our mind to act on the behalf of our heart. All right. Our heart is calling something for us. And that is really the destination that this cruise ship is headed towards. We're headed to something like paradise, something the heart wants, something the heart dreams about. And this moment of st turning the ship is turning it towards that paradise. We may not have the navigation yet or how to get there, but we know it isn't here. And we're going to turn this ship now. But the other aid, even one more, God bless the universe today, a grand trine in air, which happens most of the morning, which means that detachment of the moon, the moon in Aquarius going, okay, let's get back. Let's see the big picture. Hold on. That actually trines into Venus in uh, Gemini. So we're opening up to new ideas and Jupiter in Libra which is us basically saying, you know what? Things need to be fair. They need to be balanced. They need to be equal. I have to have harmony. I have to feel calm inside. So as we are turning the ship, there is this epiphany that is coming on the horizon where it has to do with, hey, I think we deserve higher anyways. Let's go for it. So you have your intellectual support inside of you today. You have your emotional support inside of you. What's the one current working against you? It's Pluto. Basically, in this little metaphor, where we have dropped our anchor. The sun has just opposed Pluto over the full moon, which is one of the reasons why the gravity of this full moon last weekend was so intense. And the only thing that could hold you back at this point is if you still dropped your anchor into the old rules. The old rules of, oh, in the old days, Chris got hurt. In the old days, uh, Chris wore himself down too long. In the old days, Chris put his work before his health. Okay, like those are the old rules in my life. And today, if anything starts to drag on your ship trying to make a turn towards paradise, it's probably those old rules. How do you overcome them? Hey, you're the captain of the ship. You command what the rules are, and we're at maritime law here. So it's whatever you think is best for your vessel. Now, in this awesome metaphor of ships at sea, I just have to say my heart really feels like 
My role is to be the lighthouse. I'm a person here who's trying to bring light to prevent ships like you from crashing down. And with that said, a special shout out to my Serious Joy subscribers. Today at noon, I'll be texting you something about what we call your North Node, where your North Node points in your natal chart. And if you're at sea and you're a little lost, read that text at noon. It will tell you where you always must point the ship. For everyone else, I'd love to have you try out my personal sensei service. I put so many great features in. Consider me always with you. You can try the first 30 days for $3.99 and quit at any time. It's worth the try. Come on down to SeriousJoy.com. And lastly, it's time for my summer sale. I am taking money off of my personal readings. You will save $40 off of a one-hour reading and $25 off of a 30-minute reading. I have been doing this uh, reading for many years now in the summer, and I've also found that I usually do it once a year. So this is the time if you need a little guidance with your ship at sea. Find out more at wateki.me. All right, friend, it's always a pleasure to be of soul service. I'll be back in 24 hours with more. Good luck navigating that ship. Remember, I love you, and to live, love, be. Live, love, be.